that was coming. I don't know. Are you serious? No, I don't know. Is that like Castaway? Ca- oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since I bothered rewatching Castaway. <laughs> no, I saw it that one no time, to, Christmas really. 2000, and that was enough yeah, for but, me. But it would be a lot funnier if that 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 volleyball was replaced with uh, uh, Woody Harrelson's character I, from the movie Wilson. Yeah. Somebody should CG that and make that I, a thing. If That's nothing a thing. else, that is a, a mashup movie. that will happen. <laughs> um, I will say, I will. I, I, I never thought I never thought I would say this ten years ago, but I will quite frankly watch anything with Woody Harrelson. Me too. That. Like yeah. I'm just like you just like him. Uh, he yeah. could have turned and it's possible he's the world's biggest prick. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. It's just he's got that Woody Harrelson ishness yeah. to yeah. him that you're like, I just like watching that guy. I think he always wanted to be Woody from Cheers. You wanted to serve you a drink and yeah. <laughs> Apparently he stopped stopped smoking so much pot or at least you know, Did he? Yeah, he, that's what he said. Like a couple years back I stopped smoking pot. And since then he's he's really been turning out some 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 great stuff. Or but, opening up oxygen bars. You remember that? He opened up oh, an yeah, yeah, oxygen that. bar Weird in LA. Thing in LA where yeah. everyone thought that but was then he kind of he did True Detective, and since yes. then everything's yeah. been. I mean, he certainly had, had like been Jim. heading the right way with oh yeah, no. here he, and there. He's the always. I mean, yeah. even going back to like white men can't jump. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, he's yeah. always been an back. interesting guy. Yeah, some of our yeah. listeners weren't even alive. Yes. Oh God, thank you for that. They're actually talking about doing a remake now. That's how long ago that film came out. Uh, but I will say about this new film, Wilson, which is the latest adaptation of a Daniel Close novel, the, the best known being, of course, Ghost, Ghost World. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think this film would have worked without Woody Harrelson. No, not at all. I mean, um, maybe another equally that type of quirky, charismatic I don't know, actor, yeah. You, you, but... it, it's it's a short list of, of people that... that could inhabit this role. But this movie depends on his performance yeah. in it. And yeah. he is a typically Daniel Close type character. He's a mis- like an optimistic misanthrope. You know, he wants to believe there's good people out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He's just consistently disappointed to a point where you're like, okay, maybe you're not, maybe your your standards are a little too high for what you expect from people. Well, and he's he's kind of a prick, you yeah. know. There, there's there's no, it, it, it's like he tries, you to know. Connect. On one hand, he he does says, uh, oh well, I'm an optimist, but he has impossibly high standards yeah. for other mm-hmm. people, which is pretty rich considering he hasn't done shit with his life. Well, he's like, yeah, I people suck everywhere, and yet no matter where he goes, he is in, in, with no acknowledgement of social cues that exist, yeah. trying desperately yeah, yeah, yeah. to connect with he's, anyone who's there. He's He's very no, Asper- no filter. Yeah. Type, he's type, very Asperger's. Yeah. Asperger-y. Yeah. yeah, he's, you know, Woody Harrelson aged and living <laughs> living with by himself in a house where you're still like, how do you pay for things? Because exactly. yeah. there's what you tell he doesn't I have just a told job. myself, he must be collecting on some sort of disability. Something. He must have fallen on and some, nothing like, becomes yeah. clear, but, um, it, you know, the movie basically starts with his best friend and, and his wife saying, his only friend, going, we're moving away, like out of state, yeah. far away, and he's kind of furious because that's his only connection like support to humanity or, really. at all. Yeah. And he's kind of left yeah. adrift, going, "Well, what am I going to do?" He's wandering around, sitting next to people on a train when it's the only other seat. You know, is the yeah, only he has no sense of personal space, at all. and he he has this this thing where he's just like, "Well, people aren't social anymore; they're on their computers." Of course, they're on their computers being social, but he doesn't know anything about <laughs> that. And so, whenever he sees somebody like you know sitting alone even in a bathroom urinal he's like you know he's standing right next to us like, let me give you some reflections on my, my reflections on life and the other person is like um yeah you need to get the fuck away from me now uh he's so desperate to reconnect he has the the one thing he can think of other than his dog which he has a strong connection with yeah the one thing he can think of is when he finds out that his his ex-wife there's a possibility from 17 years before and ran out on him uh that she might be able to he might be able to connect with her and sure enough finds that she's moved back to town and he connects with her played by laura dern yes and they mm-hmm. do have sort of like a, a weird sort of two very fucked up people meet cute you yeah, know like, like like hit it <laughs> off again in a way that you're sure will be temporary but you know at the time you're like okay well this is good for both of them i guess you can yeah. tell she's just as fucked up as he was reportedly was previously Obviously, had been a prostitute, uh, addicted strung to have, yeah, strung out on drugs. Yeah. And she reveals to him that although he had thought that she had had an abortion when she left him for when she was pregnant with his child, she did not, in fact, have the abortion, but had had the baby and given it up for adoption, which to, to Wilson is like the greatest news he's ever heard. Yeah. He's like, I yeah. have someone that has to connect. He's linked to somebody he, he, now. He's definitely, you know, this whole thing, boil it down to what it is. It's a, it's a guy having a very serious midlife crisis because he's. 
he's you know 45 48 you know maybe a little older than that um and he he's realized like he he has no connection his father dies at the very beginning of the movie his best friend leaves leaves his best friend who you know he's basically kind of been counting on to be his his safety net is he and his wife have left town he's got no one and you know so he kind of starts going through the list of well who do i have connections with gets back with wife and the fact that yes he's got this this is an unbeatable biological connection that, that nobody can take away, you know. But you're stuck with me. She gave this kid up for adoption. She's a teenager and she's got her own life with, you know, comfortably well off parents that have been raising her yeah, for the last seven Distance but comfortably yeah. well off parents. And she's, you know, I mean, she's a, a, a large girl. And uh, yeah. she and Larder, he and Larder and starts basically stalking her just with that. Neither one of them really being aware that this just isn't something you yeah. do. You, this you, isn't you the right. I think she knows route. that you don't do it, but I don't know why she agrees to go with him anyways. Well, I think because like she is such a uh, like think herself. She I, I think she. I, 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 from the world. I think the character kind of shows that she's not really good with the decision making process no. yeah. at all. She can be a little impetuous, and, and to some degree, she's also drawn to Woody Harrelson's character yeah. who is like unlike anyone else she's ever well, met. I could pict- you know? have pictured them getting together when she was like strung out and like had nothing going for her. Now that she seems like for all intents and purposes well put together. It's like why are you why are you still giving him the time of day? Well she she literally spells it out. He's the one guy that she's never been able to to, to frighten away. He like no matter what shenanigans she she put him through, he was always there. And there is something attractive about a person like that if you've got a codependent bone in your body. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, See, you, you you mutter like that, but that's because you're not a codependent person. No, I'm not. <laughs> you're well, well adjusted. <laughs> then shut up! We hate you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for well. being so yeah. well adjusted. You, yeah. you <laughs> That'll be my flaw. Yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> He's well, gonna go know. home after this and call his mom, and he's gonna be like, Mom, I just really want to help these two guys, and I'm not sure how to reach out to them. Yeah. Like, God damn it, yeah. stop that shit! I mean, I, I, actually, I'm not going to do that <laughs> <laughs> if they if they only made movies about well adjusted people, the, this no. movie would not be made. Well, they they don't make those movies because they suck. When yes, they exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a very Pretty exciting. Much, movie. Yeah. That's just Frank's guy. life, and he's like, get that camera out of my face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just leave me alone. He's like, I got yeah. my shit together. Why are you filming me? I'm not interesting in that way. No, no, no. You should kill someone <laughs> just to see what it feels like, Frank. I've actually thought about that. I probably shouldn't say it on this podcast. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is. It's weird that, like, I, at first this feels a lot more like something like Ghost World, you know, uh, to me, where you're kind of following this guy and his philosophy of life and, you know, it just kind of events that are happening to him and how he deals with them. But as it goes along and gets more plot oriented, I felt like the, the director here, Craig Johnson, who is n- not as as accomplished a director as Terry Zwigoff, who did right, Ghost yeah. World so well, kind of gets lost in like Hollywood convention along the way. Yeah. Like, he tries to hit really... all those marks and it's yeah. just such a jarring, he, it, totally it's, jarring. Yeah. Film yeah. It, he, he kind of, it's, this movie is, it's, it's an art house movie that, that seems to really want to be like a, just a run of the mill comedy. And, and, you know, really, I, if, if you treat Woody Harrelson's character, if you treat Wilson as this, this comic you know, fulcrum, then it, 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 the movie kind of falls apart and becomes kind of weirdly uncomfortable, which is what happened to me. Uh, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I was, there was a lot of this stuff that, you know, and I, I know there, there is a form of humor that's derived from watching the discomfort or watch, watching people do uncomfortable stuff and not being aware that they're being that uncomfortable, making people uncomfortable. That it's shit makes me movie. really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't find it amusing. It's, it's, you're right, though. It does feel like that indie film that wants to be a film that that everybody goes to see and likes and is proud that they like it, even right. though it's an indie film like Little, Little Sunshine, Little Sunshine or something. Yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of well, and that's it, 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 it's odd because one of the producers of this is Alexander Payne, who makes movies like that, but makes them very well. Yeah. He makes yes, you know absolutely. sideways and election you know, election oh. going over. Before. I think he would have done um, an incredible job with, with, with this, and I think made me maybe make me like it a, a lot more than I did. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, the, I think it was just the director. This is the, yeah, it was just the, the wrong choice. And the way it sometimes it just devolves into slapstick for no reason at all, yeah. or like the when you really get into the, the beginning of the third act, where it's kind of where you have to have that point where it's like, okay, he's finally learned something. The movie chooses to just skip entirely past the entire sequence where he learns something and how it.
what happened. We uh-huh. just know the surroundings in which it happened yeah. and just go, okay, well, he's better now. You're like, what? I, I felt like that would have been the most interesting part sure. of this I entire so, yeah. film. And the movie's just like, yeah, we're just not even going to worry about it. I that. think the whole movie would work pretty well as just like a one long road trip. Yeah. Instead of him, you know, having to connect with, reconnect with Pippi for so long, you know, them having to go visit her sister for as long as they did. The whole oh. prison sequence. I mean, it just it just jumped so far. I mean, so much. And there's characters you want to see more of that the movie doesn't give you that. Like a, like a Margo Martindale has a brief role here. It's wonderful and everything. And, and, and yes. there, every single person who who for for the most part who plays a minor role in this is is a great fight. Like Marilyn Rice Cub, yeah. who plays uh, the the wife of his best friend, who's played by Brett Gelman, who is also a very funny gentleman. Those, those two are great. They're they're in like literally like a minute. His childhood of this friend. Movie. His childhood friend was hilarious I uh it. and uh yeah his, his, the, his childhood friend was <laughs> was hilarious uh david Warchalski. uh the one the, person the, more fucked up than the, he was in the, the movie. uh the female support the female cast period not even supporting cast i mean laura dern judy greer cheryl hines marilyn reiska margo martindale i mean you know come on man those those people are all like the you know top the of daughter. their game good the- and yeah it's like with the exception of Laura Dern, why don't they don't really have much to do in here? Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Even Laura Dern gets kind of shuttled out of the film right. mm-hmm. when they decide that they don't need her anymore. And I, I just kind of went, well, I was loving the way that dynamic was building between them. And then the movie yeah. just kind of abandons it. Like it was never important to the plot at all. Yeah. We're like, well, this is a character piece. seems like they're, that, that dynamic that we've been following is really kind of essential. To, like, closure and healing was on its way, and then, oh, yeah. it's gone. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I was very mixed about this. I think Woody Harrelson definitely has all the the charisma mm-hmm. that, that he ever does. This is It's totally worth watching this movie for him. He's very funny in it, to be sure. Uh, but the joke doesn't last through the entire 101-minute running time. There's a point <laughs> where you're just kind of like, Okay, I'm just kind of exhausted with the way this what this plot is just jumping all over the place. Yes. And I just kind of want this to wrap up. Um, I I liked it, but didn't love it. It could have been so much better in the hands of a better director. I think, mm-hmm. and with with another with script polish, uh, I'm going to give this six out of ten incredibly awkward bathroom <laughs> conversations. <laughs> you know, I I gotta agree with everything that's been said here. And I think that we're all pretty much on the same page. This movie is just so jarring in tone. I mean, I remember that one instance where Woody Harrelson and the actress plays his daughter. Uh, what's her What's her name? Uh, Isabella Amara. Isabella Amara. They're having this really, like, actually genuine, tender moment by the lake when they're actually connecting his mother and daughter, or father and daughter, and it's intercut between a catfight between Cheryl Hines and Laura Dern repeatedly. And I thought, well, God, this, you know, whoever's putting this movie together has no idea what they're doing. Um it's funny. I think, you know, Bo said Alexander Payne would have been a good choice to direct this. Derek Sienfrentz turned this movie down to do Light Between Oceans, mm. which I thought was a good film. But it was I'm, okay. Yeah, but I think, you know, he could have done so good with this as well. I think there's so many other directors that could have handled this and handled the material, source material better. Yeah, I mean, this is from the director who made the, I thought, very overrated The Skeleton Twins. Yeah, the like, Just Okay no, Skeleton yeah, Twins. Just I like, Okay. I like The Skeleton like, Twins. It's but, good. It's not much more than yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I um, thought it was a little bit more than good, but I, I really like uh, Kristen, uh, Wiig? Kristen Wiig and, and uh, uh, Bill Hader. Oh, their chemistry I, is they, great. They, they're they're what, why that movie goes beyond. But then it's just like this just case, it's okay. Woody Harrelson is the only reason this movie succeeds on any level that it does. His delivery is still pitch perfect. And I, I do like, I am attracted to no filter sort of characters. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that the Helmers just didn't know what to do with him yeah. or the movie itself. So for that reason, I got to give it five out of ten bagel-shaped coffee cups, which I do not approve of because I do not approve of any beverage holder that actually takes away how much but, beverage you can have in it. Agreed. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. The, this this movie is a lot like Wilson himself. It, it, it may have an interesting thing or two to say, but it's so uncomfortable that, that by the time <laughs> it finally gets around to saying it, you just want it to get the fuck away from yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, this definitely would have been better served by, uh, you know, a, a, a director who could figure out a way that they could still have that character and, but, but make it somehow relatable, whether or not it's, it's, you know, for him, you know, figuring something out about his, his life or, you know, having some kind of uh, affect on the world. Uh, you, you don't get any of that here. You you don't really get anything uh, that that you know serves the, the you know it's it's all just 
it's all just story. It's all over this place, as Chris kind of said. And uh, you, you, when you, by the time you get to the end, you, you don't feel like really that you've gone any place particularly special. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm giving this, uh, you know, performance uh, of Woody Harrelson offers a little bit, but uh, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't go seek this movie out in the theaters if it rolls around on your Netflix. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe put it on the queue and. You know, yeah, like have, have a look, but watch I, it I, while you're doing your taxes. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I can't give it more than uh, uh, five out of ten uh, uncomfortable facial tattoos. Yeah, I used to <laughs> live with a guy. One of those things where my roommate, we needed a new roommate. He's like, I got a friend. He, he's available immediately. We'll get him. And he was fucking Wilson. He was like <laughs> 25 years older than us. We're like, why do you want to live with two 20 something year old guys? His walls were nothing but books. His floor was constantly covered with trash. He was just like, you'd go, he'd go like, Hey, how you doing? And you go, well, I'm, and he's like, Oh, nice. <laughs> you're like, oh. wow. I people think that person's like, living with a friend of mine yes. right now. People like Wilson really exist. Oh yeah. No, yeah. you can't live with people, uh, uh, the same age because they won't put up with that. 